Hey there and welcome to the channel. My name is Dominic and in this video we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve and do some advanced magic mask techniques. Let's go. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a few clips on the timeline, all different types of scenarios and subjects that we're gonna try and rotoscope. If you saw my YouTube short or Instagram reel where I talk about the magic mask, I did all of those adjustments in the color tab using an alpha output. In this video, we're gonna utilize the magic mask inside of Fusion, which offers just a few more granular controls to have better control over your rotoscope that you do. To open this clip in Fusion, we're gonna click on it and click over to the Fusion tab. Once we're in here, we're gonna click on our media in and do shift spacebar, which brings up this search box. And we're gonna type in magic mask and hit enter. It's gonna put it right in between these two. With the magic mask selected, we're gonna hit one and put it into this window. And now we're gonna start selecting our subject. Once we have our selection, we're gonna go ahead and click this button, which tracks forwards and backwards. All right, so our track is done. It looks like it did a pretty good job, even though this fence line here kind of comes into the frame a little bit. I really just want this area up here to look good. Now with the tracking all done, we'll come back to the magic mask options and click on the mat tab. This will allow us to dial in the settings of the mat. We don't need to be very precise on this one since it's just a sharp edge. Once all your masking is done, we'll go back to the edit tab. Now the edge of this building is perfectly rotoscoped. We could leave it like this and it could be useful if we wanted to put this clip in front of something else. We can just put another clip underneath it and blend them together, but that doesn't look very good. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer and then on the bottom one, we're gonna right click and click Reset Fusion Composition. And that will remove the mask on the bottom clip. What we can do then is lift up our rotoscope layer and we can add items in between these two layers to get the illusion that there's something behind the edge of the building. And from here we can just grab an asset, drop it onto the timeline, change the blending mode of this clip, and now we can take it and drop it behind our layer here. And you can see it's now behind our rotoscoped edge here. Rotoscoping a hard edge like that with a lot of good contrast is really easy to do. So let's jump into rotoscoping a moving person and see how the magic mask works with that. So here we've got our second clip with a lot more motion, a lot more movement. Let's bring this over to Fusion. Go ahead and do the same thing. Grab our magic mask, drop it here. And I wanna to navigate to a frame where the full body is largest and uh, completely visible. And then coming up to the magic mask panel up here, for mode, select better. Make sure stroke mode is on add. Then we'll zoom in here a little bit. And we'll select everything that we want resolve to track. Then we'll come over here to subtract and we'll tell resolve a few things that we don't want it to track. You can see the rotoscope looks pretty feathered right now and that's okay, we'll clean that up in the matte options. Go ahead and make this full screen again. And now we can go ahead and click this button to track forwards and backwards through the clip. Now that our track is done, we'll come over here to the mat options. And from here, we can tweak these settings to dial in our mat. You can see here in a couple frames, it didn't quite clean up these areas here where the parking line is behind his legs. But for this specific clip, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna leave it. So once we're done, we'll come back to the edit tab. And just like the other one, I'll duplicate the clip, come over to this one and click reset fusion composition. Now we can add graphics and text in between the two clips to get some pretty cool effects. We can even add some cool letterboxing to emphasize our subject. We could even add some cool effects to like the background. We wanna make our subject pop. There are really endless possibilities when you wanna get creative with the magic mask. For our last clip, we're going to try and rotoscope out our subject here and add some text behind. So again, let's open up in Fusion, rinse and repeat, do the same exact thing. In this instance, we wanna find a frame where our subject is nice and sharp and mostly in frame. We'll go ahead and select better. Select add, go ahead and select our subject. This is a pretty solid track. Go ahead and track forwards and backwards. 
Now that our track's done, let's go back over to the mat options and from here, and will dial these in a bit. And that looks like a pretty good looking rotoscope. So let's go back to our edit page, do the same exact thing, right click, reset fusion composition on the bottom layer. Let's go ahead and grab some text. Let's see how this looks. So pausing right here, I can see a couple areas around his hair and on the side of his face where the mask is eroded a little too much. So let's click on our clip and go back into the fusion comp. And then we can come over here to the matte options and we can kind of expand this a little bit. Hair is always tricky with these kind of things. Now we'll come back to our clip here, play it back a little bit and see how that looks. All right, we can still probably come out a little bit more. Let's mess with this a little bit. That looks a bit better. So that concludes this video on using the magic mask inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope you were able to take some of this information and apply it to your own workflow and get more creative with some of the projects that you might be working on. This is awesome if you wanna just spice up those videos just a little bit and have a cool text review from behind a subject or something like that. And having Fusion built right inside of DaVinci Resolve makes it super easy to just jump over to the other tab and try experimenting a little bit. If it doesn't work, doesn't work, but if it does, it can sometimes take your videos to the next level. So anyways, that's it from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It really helps out the channel and I'm really trying to grow this thing into a big community of filmmakers where we can all come together and enjoy the content and learn something from each other every single day. And if you do want to stay up to date on all of the videos I release, hit that subscribe button because I've got a lot of new content coming down the pipeline. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.